all high school girls out there, you are a little too obnoxious, so we decided to reduce your numbers. Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. What? <laughs> that is... Does not make sense with what this movie was. <laughs> no... This is episode 138 of Ivy Suffer. My name is Nathan. I'm Kit. Wow, I'm Katie. <laughs> and this week we watched the Kevin Hart film Tag. <laughs> At least I did. <laughs> no, we watched Tag from 2015. This was Katie's pick. And, Still starring uh, Kevin. Yeah, Kev- Still, yeah. <laughs> Kevin also Hart Ske- as the wind. Kevin Hart. <laughs> he was just like up in a tree farting somewhere. <laughs> what a weird movie that would have been. <laughs> uh, sort of no less weird than this turned out to be. Yeah. So I have a lot of thoughts. Why Why was this your pick? Because I had never even heard of it. Um, because what? You like Kevin Hart? I love Kevin Hart. I actually forgot who Kevin Hart was for a minute. (laughs) And for some reason, I thought you guys were talking about whoever plays Paul Blart. (laughs) Kevin Hart. Mall cop. Wait, what's his name? Kevin James. Kevin James. I was going to say Kevin Smith, and I was like, that's not right either. Wow. My brain's a scrambly do. So... Uh, I picked this because, <laughs> <laughs> because um, I remember the, when the trailer came out. So yeah, this is from 2015, not too long ago. I remember when the trailer came out, and it's literally like the first five minutes of the movie. Um, and I just remember thinking, holy shit, I need to watch this movie. And then I just sort of forgot about it because it was like, uh, I don't really remember like how the reception was for it here, but it actually did really, really well in Japan. Um, but you know, it was just one of those things where like I w- I'm not gonna pay for it because I don't have any money. So I just was like, I'll just wait until it comes on something if it comes on something. Um, and then when I was making that list for our Patreon, I was just like looking for stuff that was free on YouTube because YouTube actually has like a pretty good uh, like selection of stuff that's free. And I came across this and I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot about this movie. So it just kind of was like the perfect time, I, f- I feel like. Yeah, I, uh, a lot of the time if I look up some movie that's at least somewhat older and it's not streaming anywhere I always just go and look up like the movie with free on YouTube and especially if it's like yeah. some like 80s horror movie it's probably on there yeah Rumpelstiltskin Rumpelstiltskin yeah the one from 1995 we demand I watched it on YouTube one time they took it down yeah we demand it now what did everybody think about this? Let's get. I want to hear Katie's last. Kit, what did you think about this? <laughs> well, it was your pick, so. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was really good. I. Uh, it started off very strong, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is real weird." I'm into it, and then at about like the 15, 20 minute mark, it really started to drag and was kind of losing me a little bit when it's just like normal high school stuff. But then the teacher pulled out a minigun and shot up the class, and <laughs> it got weirder, and I was way into it. Yeah, this movie kind of, like, hit that sweet spot for me of, like, movies I love, of, like, kind of a weird horror movie mixed with an almost, like, like Wes Anderson-y, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind kind of, like... Mm-hmm. Indie yeah. drama kind of thing. It was I was very into this and 
Too bad I was in space, so it's not a comedy yeah, horror. Yeah, shit, I, for, I forgot. It can't be anything else. Wind can't yeah, kill you, so this isn't a horror movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like this a lot. Uh, what do you think, Katie? Uh, I also liked it a lot. Um, I... I, I liked how I, I agree like there were some parts of it that kind of dragged for me I felt like I don't I'm not really like I don't I, I'm having a hard time like describing <laughs> what it what yeah, yeah like okay this movie was really good I'm I'm kind of like well get to it later obviously i'm like not really sure how i feel about some parts of the ending honestly like some of it sort of doesn't ultimately make sense it got very like ah we're just gonna like do something for the hell of it the end yeah and like i get where they were make them be like what where am i (laughs) yeah it's like i do really enjoy movies where I don't know what's going on the entire time which this movie very much is like that and there's like weird things that happen that you have to kind of like piece together yourself which I like I don't mind that at all because they did it in a way that I didn't feel you know like sometimes and there's been a lot of movies we've watched where random shit happens but like for no reason it's just like nonsensical and this didn't feel that way but at the same time I feel like I guess my question comes from the, the the how long was the movie an hour and a half hour and like 20 hour 25 minutes, take. I feel like maybe I wanted there to be well let's just get into it let's just get into it so I don't know. Yeah, um yeah jump in there I'm trying to find I saw something earlier that I'll, I'll, if I could find it again, that kind of talked about how this movie was like written, which I, I, I again, I didn't, I didn't see it in an interview with somebody kind of like a theorizing what it's about, but it was essentially about like, um, like kind of what it what it's like to be a lesbian in Japan. Hmm. And I'm trying to find it because it was kind of, it was like an interesting read, but I, you know, I also don't know how true that is or if it's just the way somebody read it because, like, the director wrote it and it is, you know, a, a man, so. I... Well, off that course, I just want to say it makes perfect sense that this film doesn't make a whole lot of sense because this is the same director who has done the recent Nick Cage movie where it's a radioactive wasteland and Nick Cage has a bomb attached to his penis that looks <laughs> to a girl. I have not watched that movie yet. Now I'm definitely going to. It It's coming out sometime this year it was screened at like film festivals at the beginning of the year and everyone was like yeah this is pretty dope uh okay yeah there's like <laughs> I, this this seems like a movie that I'm, there, there's probably like insane like reddit threads about you know oh yeah. i'm sure like i feel um, like if you if you like really wanted to, you could probably just get lost reading what this movie is actually about, like, or people's, like, theories about it, because I, I mean, I just, I was, as, like, the credits were rolling, I was, like, I got caught on YouTube, like, like whatever, like, the top comment Limp was. Oh. No, like, oh. like, on, on, like, at least the app on my phone, it'll show you, like, one comment, and then you have to click to open the rest, and I don't remember what it was, but it, like, caught my attention, I was like, oh, I wonder what, like, people think about this. And I was, like, mm-hmm. reading through, like, a handful of comments, and it was a lot of people just kind of being, like, I don't really know what this movie's about, but it kind of, like, struck a chord with me with, like, the trauma I've suffered and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I, it's, it's it was interesting, and, like, I would, I'd be really interested to hear, like, 
uh, like a an, like an audio commentary for this movie or something. Yeah, well, the the movie is based off of a novel that is called Real Onigaku, which means tag. Uh, so real tag, uh, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but it's written by somebody named Yusuke Yamada, who I'm not trying to. Uh, I, I'm not trying to uh, guess who this person is based off of their name, but that is like really typically maybe also not a woman. So I'm not really sure. Like, like going back to your point about um, it being connected to like how it is to be lesbian in Japan. However, I don't really know a lot about how that's perceived there. I feel like uh, it's probably, you know, America is not good with it, obviously. Yeah, it's I not feel like great, we should say it I... as a bunch of mostly, like, cis white people. We don't know what we're talking mm-hmm. about. I'm just, yeah. I only brought yeah. it up because I saw, like, uh, I read something about someone kind of theorizing that's what it was about. I mean, it does make sense to me if you think about... Um, like I feel like just that just like their culture is sort of more towards like you know putting everybody else first so if you're from a really traditional family who like has really religious beliefs or something and and you find out that you're gay or what have you anything that diverts from the quote-unquote norm I feel like probably you're hiding it which I think is interesting if you think about like Obviously, nobody, if you haven't seen this movie, you don't know what we're talking about yet. But the main character, we sort of see, like, different iterations of her. And so I feel like maybe that has something to do with that. So, like, I, just being me, did not take that away from the movie at all. But you saying it, like, now I'm starting to think of the movie in a different way. Yeah, like, I I feel like after I read that, I kind of thought back on, um, it's like the the scene with uh the the chords towards mm-hmm. like the end yeah and i was like okay i could kind of see like something coming from this or like the i don't know self like oh, i can't i don't know i don't know how to explain it we'll get to it when we get to that scene but yeah uh, i mean it, and it it does make sense too because like there's very clearly a relationship between Mitsuko who's the main character and her friend Aki uh where like somebody jokes that they're like dating or whatever but they do have this like really strong connection and every single time that Mitsuko like goes through a new scenario or whatever Aki is like the only one that continues to show up so I mean that makes a lot of sense do we know why this movie is called tag other than like the book I was very I, confused by, like, the title. Yeah, because, I mean, I think it comes from... Well, we'll let's just start, and we'll get there. I'll tell you. All right. So, <laughs> let's see. I, I don't Basically, know how we're going <laughs> to... This movie? How yeah, this is okay. going to get explained. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so this movie starts at 100, truly. And this, like, <laughs> first clip is what was in the trailer. So... This <laughs> I don't know what when I saw it I was like oh my god I need to watch this I, movie and all I knew was like in the, like when Kit had texted us while he was watching it and he was like if the rest of this movie is like the first two minutes this is gonna be amazing and I was like oh something good's gonna happen and then like it happens and I was like holy shit okay so you have not seen the trailer right either no, of I you? didn't know I knew I didn't even know this movie existed until you said we were gonna do it yep same okay so I had already <laughs> seen that part which. To be fair, even though there's a lot of really good stuff throughout this movie, that really is the shock value. Like, haven't ever seen anything like it. Probably never will see anything like it again. <gasps> but, wow. So, basically, this movie opens up um, just on a bus, two buses. They're, like, charter buses on the, just driving along the countryside. It's gorgeous. I'm not really sure where in Japan they are, but they are in Japan. Um... And the bus is just filled with, like, a bunch of schoolgirls, and they're just, you know, kind of just laughing and having a great time, enjoying their lives, and some, for some reason, they just start having a pillow fight. One of the girls... (laughs) On the bus to school. (laughs) 
on the, on the bus. Yeah, and it's it's interesting here to note that um, all of the girls at this point are wearing like the really stereotypical like um, school outfits that look like you know like the Sailor Moon outfits or whatever, and <clears throat> that was a, an important piece later. I thought so. They're probably in like middle school i i think so they're having a pillow fight for whatever reason it's slow-mo the beautiful sun is coming through the window and there's like feathers everywhere and there's one girl who is our main character whose name is mitsuko who is just like being she's just like keeping to herself she's like writing in her journal or whatever and these other girls are like hey kind of like making fun of her and being like what are you writing and like try and look at her notebook so she drops her pen on the floor and so she bends down to get the pen and then something happens and the entire top half of the bus as long as well as the top halves of all of the girls just blow off from both of the buses oh fucking rules there's blood splurting everywhere the bus is like slowly rolling to to a stop um there's just it's just it's literally like the top it's like the bottom half of the bus clean cut and there's just like the bottom of the girl's bodies like sitting there and she's just like uh yeah, i think like the like the aspect of this that like because it's like it's shocking at first but like how long the like it's just like kind of showing her standing there like what the fuck as the bus is just slowing down mm-hmm. it's like so good like it like it, there's like a solid probably at least minute minute and a half of just the bus kind of slowly going as you just like zoom in on her and just see like this aftermath yeah and like i said this bus was like completely full every seat was full Plus, you know, there was two of the buses. So technically, like, the bus that she's on, we see whatever's happening to the bus ahead of it before it happens. And it's just, like, it's so jarring. Because we don't know what happens. But we hear some kind of, like, whooshing. So whooshing and there's, like, leaves or whatever. And Mitsuko kind of, like, realizes that there's some kind of, like, evil wind thing happening. There's, like, wind and noises (laughs) coming towards her. Such a good word combination. <laughs> evil wind. It's it is. It's really evil. There there was how, some kind of noises happening, but how is there not a movie called Evil Wind? Where'd he got Demon Wind? I know that could be. You need a crossover. Demon Wind. The happening can be Evil Wind. I mean, when I searched Evil Wind on Letterboxd, a movie called Beyond the Door Three came up. So maybe that's like an alternate title for it. I feel like I've heard of that. On IMDb, we have Evil Wind and Dry Land and Devil Winds. And then our favorite movie, The Evil Within. No, thank you. (laughs) So she ducks, basically, and we see, like, her hair, (laughs) some of her hair get, like, chopped off or whatever. And she's like, oh, no, Um, a bunch of electrical, like, towers are, like, snapping and getting chopped off. And so she's like, okay, shit. And then we get this kind of, like, long panning shot of her running down the street, like, past all of these, like, half bodies just, like, laying everywhere. And it's, like, really hard to explain how, like, visually cool it is. I definitely, even though, obviously, we're ruining everything, recommend that you go watch it just because it's, like this whole thing involving this evil wind situation in the beginning is just like so crazy looking um so she's running up the street she eventually comes across like a group of kids just walking in the street and she's like telling them to watch out she tackles one of the girls as the wind comes through and just what's is there a word for like chopping somebody in half bisected basically okay because like all i could think of was like it's not decapitation, obviously. There's got to... It's just like, yeah. So they're... Torso-cated. Yeah, torso-cated. I like that. So um, they're like, oh, no. Oh, wow. And then... 
um, immediately there's another group of kids that are like riding their bikes on the side of the street and the girl that Mitsuko saved like tries to tell them like watch out but then she as well as all of the people on the bicycles get chopped in half I wonder how many people died in this movie is there a count somewhere because it's a lot no <laughs> usually that shit sometimes IMDB will have that under trivia but this one didn't okay because I can't even we've already lost like at least 50 kids yeah. In, the, yeah. in the first like five minutes um so does it count though if it's the same people being killed over and over again well <clears throat> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i like that this whole episode is a lot of well and then like a long silence and i don't know i don't know what's happening <laughs> i'm not sure yeah because We'll get to the other thing that confused me, which kind of has to do with that question. So she's essentially just like running through the woods and she comes to a river. Uh, we just get this like shot of the landscape again where there's just like half bodies littered everywhere. <laughs> like her, everywhere. It's her just like slowly wa like wading through this river while there's just like an arm hanging from the tree and like dead bodies in the water. It was just it's I don't know, like, I, I can't overstate how, like, the first five or ten minutes of this movie is just, like, complete chaos that you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, it's it, it's pretty intense. So, she gets into the, wa into the river and is, like, washing herself up. She finds a uniform like another a different top that she puts on so it's like she's changed uniforms at this point which i thought was really interesting because after she basically like cleans herself up she runs for a while until she makes it to a school and she, her, she's like really confused because this this shot i thought was really cool too because she's running and running and running and it's like facing her so we see behind her right and she's just like running this poor girl just runs so much <laughs> in this movie it's like all running essentially and slowly she just starts to like come into this group of girls walking to school but it's like the way the shot is i just thought was really cool so she ends up at this other school and so because she's changed her uniform she's wearing the same uniform that the girls at this other school are wearing even though she very clearly is from a different school because she was wearing a different uniform in the very beginning so this is the first time that something it, it changes in her essentially so she's walking up her friend aki comes up and is like what's wrong with you why is your hair wet why are you looking like that you're being all crazy and we get a lot of scenes of mitsuko being scared by like a gust of wind that's just like a normal gust of wind but she's like traumatized Trump. fuck that wind yeah it's really and... windy today and i don't like it <laughs> well, I know, right? You never know now. Yeah. Um and like essentially she she basically runs inside because she's scared of the wind and Aki kind of like comforts her and is like what like everything's normal. We're totally fine. It's fine. And Misko is like really confused. She's like, "Do I go to this school? Have I been going to this school before?" And she's Aki's like, "Yeah, what what are you talking about?" But it's like weird because she's like, "I don't know. I had this really weird dream." And she kind of like tells her about the dream, but then also like she doesn't have any memories of like going to the school and stuff. And uh so after she tells her about the dream, Aki is like, "Ha, huh, that's silly." and she opens the window and makes Mitsuko like put her hand out there and like feel that the wind is normal and then she's like hey like do you want to skip class we can like go on a walk and I was like I mean I would not want to be going on a walk after what just happened to me but <laughs> yeah she's like there... just, just not no, go ahead kid I said there could be wind out there yeah, I was going to say, she's, she is not taking like into consideration that she is currently terrified of wind. She also, like, just ran for who knows how long. So I'd be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> um, yeah, but can I just take a nap? Right. I didn't eat breakfast. Like, I, you know, didn't drink any water. So 
those are interesting points to maybe hold on to that I'm just realizing now why it all makes sense. So uh, basically, um, they're going to, Aki is going to go like show her to her homeroom because she doesn't remember. And they have this like run in with these two teachers where they're essentially just like, hey, like everything okay and Aki's like yeah she's just having a bad day and one of the teachers was like what a bad day I've never heard of that in my life and I was just like what the fuck so uh, they go to the classroom Aki introduces Mitsuko to I think her name was Taiko uh, yeah Taiko yeah. and a girl named Sir who they call Sir because she's surreal yeah S-U-R sure. Sir uh, I can't pronounce it the way that they were, so I'm not. I'm just gonna say sir. Uh, and they basically are gonna cut class together. Um, like I, th- there's this is the part where they're talking. Mitsuko is like trying to convince herself that she remembers like what's going on and that everything is normal. And this is where they have the conversation where Aki is like, "Yeah, we're dating, we're in love," but it's kind of like. I guess it, it feels like, like it, it feels like that thing in high school where like you're kind of serious, but like making it come off as a joke, right? Just in case, because it, it is worth noting, of course, obviously that they're at an all girls school. So yeah, this movie there are no men in this movie until like the last maybe ten minutes. Yeah. Yep. Well, well I guess a I, pig-headed person. Yeah, I was gonna That's... say there's a pig, but he. Well, we'll get there. <laughs> uh so they're gonna leave <clears throat> they run into the teachers and the teachers is like teacher is like what's going on they're like haha you're dumb they don't really say that but they essentially just run around her and leave there's this like kind of these are the kind of parts that yeah feel like like a slice of life movie to me where they like bust out the doors and there's like this music playing like guitar music and they're like running through the woods and everything's all great miss goes like starting to feel normal because like her friends are there or whatever um they get to the lake finally where aki tells the other girls about mitsuko's dream and sir is like oh that's totally possible <laughs> she's like the weird one she's wearing like a choker or whatever and she's supposed to be i think like the i don't know the weird girl quote unquote she's like yeah that's totally possible that that ha- that that bus and the evil wind happened because you know there's alternate realities and she kind of like explains the idea of like there being multiple universes and she's like see like everything you do is like predetermined or whatever i don't know she basically explains it by throwing a rock in into the lake and taiko is like well why does it matter if you threw a rock in there or not and then all of a sudden this like crocodile busts <laughs> out of the lake and like chomps down on her she's like screaming and there's like blood and everything and then it like cuts to sir being like well see if I threw a rock in the lake, then a crocodile, that could have happened, essentially. And she's like, why the, why, why did it have to be me? <laughs> Movie needed more crocodiles, to be fair. Yeah. It was like a crotch It was like chomping on her crotch. <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, how was that not a movie, either? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So she's, like, essentially just saying, like... It's essentially the butterfly effect. effect like the, the butterfly effect. The, the butterfly but- blend I- affleck. Uh, whatever you do changes whatever. But then it doesn't really make sense because, like, <clears throat> they basically find, like, a, some random pillows on the ground and they're like, someone was sleeping out here. And then they pick up the ground pillows and start throwing them to each other. Which really grossed me out. <laughs> you never uh, thrown a pillow before? Yeah. No, I listen. I see, I see plenty of like street mattresses and ground pillows here, and I can't say I've ever touched one or thrown it to somebody and let it hit, or like had someone throw it to me and have it like caress my face and stuff. Not a fan. Well, she just take a nap. Yeah. I mean. 
I don't go out to the woods and find you a nice dirt pillow. Talk <laughs> some friends. I would take a dirt pillow over an actual ground pillow. So essentially they're like throwing the pillow around and for some reason exactly like what happened on the bus there's like feathers flying everywhere. They're like really manhandling this pillow. And as they're doing this, Mitsuko like looks at her finger and there's like a drop of blood on it. And then she looks up into the forest. There's like feathers flying everywhere. And she sees two people. And I didn't actually get a look at them, so I don't know who they are, but I assume that they're um Keiko and Izumi. Is that right? I honestly don't know. I just remember she looked up and there was people and then she looked again and they were gone. One of them is wearing a wedding dress and that's why I assumed maybe I should have gone back. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, she sees two people. One that I, I assumed were just two people getting married at that point and I was like, what? Uh, and then Sir, after that, talks about predetermination, predetermined destiny and uh, and she like takes one of the feathers and she drops it and she says like, the path that this feather takes between the time it falls and lands is already predetermined and the only way that you can change your fate or whatever is by doing something really spontaneous that you would never normally do and she pretends like she's gonna jump in the lake and the girls are like no 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 don't do that and then she's like okay I won't but if I did it would change something so uh, Mitsuko and Aki are like haha whatever and they run back to the school they go to class they sit down in their desks and one of the teachers that they ran into earlier comes in and is like okay pull out your books blah 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 um she looks down on the ground and there's a pillow there she's like what a pillow and she picks it up and Aki's like hey throw the pillow here essentially but then the teacher pulls out a machine gun and machine guns everybody. <laughs> oh, rules. Uh, <clears throat> she And the teacher yells something about, like, you think you can cut my class? <laughs> and I was like, damn. She what? is really... Well, it showed up. Yeah. That's fucked so... up. That's not teaching anyone a lesson. I mean, no. Like, they cut I'm a different class, but... But I showed up the... I'm getting shot. Yeah, you don't. You damned if you do, damned if you don't. She's gonna shoot you because you didn't show up, but you did show up, so now she shoots you. So you know. Um. When... Everyone yeah, gets that's why shot. Everybody should just not go to school. Yeah, that's true. That's the the tag is tagging back and forth between skipping and not skipping class. <laughs> um. Everyone, including Aki, gets shot, except Mitsuko is fine. Sir and Taiko, like, run in and take her out of the room. And they hide in a different room where there's another student that's basically just like, oh my god, what's going on? This is so crazy. The other teacher from earlier comes in the room and she's like, oh, it's teacher, it's me. But then she gets shot and falls out a window. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Yeah, it looked like uh, pretty painful when she hits the ground. Yeah, mm, sure did. Uh, Taiko, like, stands up to try and be like... Well, first she just, like, grabs her ankle, which I'm not really sure what she thought that was going to do. But she stands up to try and... She, like, puts her hand up to try and, like, stop the teacher. But the teacher just, like, shoots her hand off and then <laughs> explodes her head with by shooting it. It's pretty... Gnarly. This movie starts out extremely well, like at ten. <laughs> like for real, and it goes down, but like towards the end, we're still kind of at like a seven throughout. Like it goes down, but it doesn't really go to zero. Um. Yeah, her head exploded. Then Mitsuko and Sir try to run out, but Sir gets shot, and she says something essentially that's like life is so real don't let it beat you and then she gets shot and dies and it's goes like oh my god what the fuck so amen. her huh amen <laughs> essentially 
Uh, Mitsuko and a bunch of a bunch of other girls basically are trying to escape the building. They run out of the school and suddenly, I don't know if it's actually called Anchors Away, but you know that song that's like, Anchors Away, da, da, whatever, starts playing for whatever reason. The teachers are like up in a window, just like mowing down a bunch of the girls as they run out of the school. Also, there's bombs for some reason. So it's like really ramped up at this point. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? They're just like running through like explosions and gunshots. Um, one of the girls is essentially like yelling to Mitsuko, like, you have to do something. You have to think about why this is happening. You're the only one that can save us. And, um, then they're like leaving the school grounds and all of them, except for Mitsuko, get chopped in half by the wind again. And she's like, God, God, this again? Not again. So, <laughs> right. So she runs from the wind for, like, a pretty long time. She's, like, running through the countryside. She makes it to a city where um, she, like, runs down an alley and comes out into, like, a crowded shopping street. She's, like, you know, scared. So she's, like, looking around. She finds a police officer's booth. And there's, like random screams for some reason but like you don't see who's screaming i guess it's just to scare her i don't know because she's like freaking out and the officer is like hey like what's wrong do you need a doctor like what's going on and then she recognizes meets go but she's like oh hey keiko like what's going on what are you doing here like why are you wearing that outfit and is like laughing at her because her outfit is like a high school girl's uniform and she makes a comment to where they're like college age I don't, they're 23 or something like that i didn't write it down um yeah they definitely like like uh, like the this the new actress or whatever definitely like looks older than the other one yeah because like at so, this happened and i was like wait is this lost highway what's happening yeah, so not only calls her Keiko, recognizes her, when Mitsuko looks into the mirror, she is, like, physically a different person now. I'm going to keep calling her Mitsuko just to not get confused, I guess, but she physically looks different. She's got very short hair. She's much older. And the police officer is like, well, what are you doing here? We have to get you to the reception. Like, let's go. And we're like, what the fuck? So... She, they get in the police car and there's all these girls going like, yeah, and cheering and like slapping the police car. <laughs> and the police officer is just like, this is fine. So they get to this church essentially where there's all of these, these women that are like dressed up and like, yay, she's here. And they're like waiting for her. She uh, walks into basically like a room where Aki is there. And she's like, oh, my God, she's so happy. And she's like, Aki, like, what's going on? And Aki's just kind of like, hey, we'll talk later. Um, so apparently the situation that she's walked into is that uh, Mitsuko is getting married. And she has shown up to basically, you know, get ready. They have her dress. And Aki goes to, like, blow her hair dry, even though her hair's fine. But it kind of, like, triggers a memory of, you know, everyone getting chopped in half by the wind. So she sort of freaks out. So Aki tells all the other girls to leave. And then she's like, hey, do you remember me? Um, And Mitsuko's like, yeah, of course I do. And she's like, okay, well, just be cool. Like, right now, your name is Keiko, and it's a long story. But, like, just, you're going to get married. Just do it. They are watching. And I was like, who's what? (laughs) What? Um... We get a brief flash of Sir essentially just saying, like, life is weird. I mean, you know. Yeah, accurate. It sure is. So, okay, this part's really weird. Aki is like, okay, just okay, like... This is, this is the weird part. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, just do what I say, right? You know, like, everything will be fine. It'll be fine. So, some of the girls come back into the room um mitsuko is like wearing her wedding dress now and they come in and they're like oh so pretty whatever and 
then Aki just was like, hey, look, and just, like, breaks some girl's arms and then, like, snaps her neck. <laughs> and I was like, what? Uh, she also stomps on somebody's head, which was pretty cool. And... <laughs> the the way her head, like, popped like a Pringles can and just, like, brains shooting out. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. And she kills some other girls, and eventually, and it's like Aki's just like, okay, like we can do this, like this is just what we do, right? We can do this, and she's like, okay. <laughs> so she gives her Aki gives Mitsuko like a broken wine bottle, so it's basically like she's holding it by the neck, and then it's just kind of like a big shard at the end. Um, and the door is open to the chapel where Mitsuko is supposed to be getting married. She's holding the broken wine bottle like a bouquet. And she starts walking down the aisle, and in the beginning, everyone's, like, cheering for her, but then it turns into, like, them yelling mean things at her, like, calling her an ugly bitch, and then also taking their clothes off. I don't Yeah, really... this, this whole scene, like, this is another one where, like, I was just like, okay, now I definitely don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> right. And it gets worse. Yeah. It does. Uh, because at the end of the aisle, it's more like, confusing. up uh, up at the, I don't know any terms for a church, uh, by the way. I just called it the stage. It's definitely not called the stage, but you know, at the end of the aisle where the stage is. Yeah, the church stage. Yeah, there's a coffin, and the girl who was playing, first of all, there's a, there's a girl that's like wearing all black, even though it's a wedding, and she's like playing the piano, but kind of really menacingly and she's like ha 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 and like laughing all crazy and she's like here's your groom and she takes the lid off the coffin and it inside is a pig man like <laughs> he's a man wearing a suit but he's got a pig's head yes yeah, jigsaw yeah. and he's also like oink 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 and uh <laughs> did, also did, his... he, did he make noise he was he was oinking, yeah. He wasn't <laughs> saying oink, but it was like wee 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 wee. It was oh, I like think I big noise. That. that makes it even better. Yeah. And also, um, actually, a man just going oink oink. That would have been perfect. Wake here. I wonder what the Japanese like onomatopoeia is for oink. <laughs> they, you know, boo boo. That's what that's what it is. I'm in. Yeah, you should adopt that. <laughs> My favorite one is like for dog instead of like woof woof or bark bark. They they say wan wan. Did you say bark bark? <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, I'll bark bark. <laughs> I don't think you had a dog. I think you had a chicken. <laughs> bark. Um. So cute. Okay, so what happened? Pigman. So he's also got like a bloody mouth, and he's like definitely squealing like a pig. Um, and she's like, "Wow, this is not great. I don't want to marry a pigman." And so <laughs> she finally. Rude. This is the first instance where. <laughs> this is the first instance where Mitsuko finally stands up for herself and she stabs the pig man in the jugular with the wine bottle and everyone's like oh no pig man so then she she just like starts stabbing a bunch of people um and aki comes in and is like yeah let's go this way but then the two teachers show up but this time they're wearing kind of like matrixy outfits. They're like black pleather <laughs> outfits. Yeah, this was very strange to me. Like when this, like these people just showed up. Mm-hmm. And then he, they, they, her, the, the four of them just start like fighting. Aki is pretty good at fighting. Um, Mitsuko and Aki manage to get away. Aki is like, somebody is after us. Um, I'm going to lure them away while you run to free, like, while you run so you're safe. And Mitsuko's kind of like, no, I don't want to leave you again. Like, I just got you back. And Aki's like, go, get the fuck out of here. So she does. <clears throat> She's running again, this poor girl. And she comes upon a bridge where somebody on the bridge calls to her and is like, hey, over here, like, what are you doing, Izumi? And calls her Izumi. And she's like, what? And she 
looks in a mirror and turns into yet a third person. So she is now a a girl named Izumi who is like wearing a race uniform and there's like a couple other girls that are like hey like what's going on like have you been are you too are you tiring yourself out like we're in this race like let's go we're in a race so she's joined by a bunch of other girls and but they're completely different girls like this is not the same group of girls that she was with in the beginning they're completely different they're all running and are essentially like you know Mitsuko's like how like she's confused and they're basically just like we've always been friends We're, we've always been racing together and we get a couple flashbacks from like them being kids playing you know racing or whatever in middle school doing races and um it's kind of weird and essentially they're like this is your big race like this is the race that you've been training for your whole life like you like, will help you we gotta go so she's running with her friends and then all of a sudden Sir, Taiko, and Aki show up. But like I think Aki is wearing a race uniform, but the other two girls are not. And they are basically just like cheering her on. They're like, You can do this, you can do this. She's like looking on the sidelines and seeing like her and her childhood friends like on the sidelines, and it's like really strange. Uh, so they're basically like in the final stretch of the race. There's like all these people on the side cheering, but then at the back of the pack, the teachers and the pig man are there like beaten up girls. The pig man's doing flips for some reason. I don't know. They're just like chasing after them. And wait a minute. Yeah. The, 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 the matrix women were the teachers. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't. I did not notice that. Yeah. So, yeah. So they're the same girls, and then there's Pigman. Good old Pigman. Uh, Pigman doesn't seem to be very good though, because like, the teachers are like kicking girls down and like whatever, and he's just like doing flips and kind of like jumping over them. You so, ever try to fight people with a pig mask on? I think he. I think he maybe was like, guys, I can do a flip. <clears throat> in a pig mask like just let me do it and they were like okay um he also is like a lot slower than them because they like leave flips. him at dust pretty easy He's got yeah, pig it is, mask yeah. On. yeah it's the pig flips um so essentially aki is like you ha- like you have to escape this world like you can do it just and so mitsuko is just running and running and running a lot and Eventually, she, like, runs out of the crowd, she runs through this lot, she runs down this path, and then she makes it to, like, I don't know what you even call this area. It's kind of, like, it looks kind of like it's under an overpass, but also going in, there's, like, a tunnel into the earth. Like, it's not caves, but it's maybe sort of, like, a really big sewage system that doesn't actually have any water in it or something. I don't really know. Uh, I I don't know. I just thought it was a cave, but yeah. Well, anyways, she gets oh, she gets to the cave, and let's we'll call it a cave. And I just wrote <laughs> some kind of underground place, an underground dwelling. Yeah. yeah, there's a girl there that's like this way, like follow me, and she does follow her, but she follow she leads her to a very big group of girls who are all standing and facing her but there's hair covering their faces and they also are making a hissing sound and it was pretty creepy uh yeah not not a fan of that if i came across it (laughs) no and i have to say even though this girl is obviously evil i kind of uh connected with her because she was like can you please die which is like essentially what i say to like people on twitter you know (laughs) to say it really nicely and then usually you don't get in trouble sometimes you do uh she's just like hey could you please die like if you live this is what the girl's saying to mitsuko if can you please die because if you live then we all die she also does some switchblade action and she's like we died because of you and she goes she's like struggling with her because she's trying to kill her 
But Aki shows up and kind of like gets the girl off of Mitsuko. They run through the crowd of girls and um, they basically get to, they get like past them and Aki stops and is like, because at this point she still looks like the race girl Izumi. So um, Aki is like, you're Mitsuko, repeat that you're, you know, I'm Mitsuko. And so she repeats it a bunch of times. The scene was kind of long. It's essentially them just like yelling back and forth to eventually Mitsuko turns back into her normal self the way that she looked in the very beginning. So, um, you know, she's back. Uh, Aki essentially is like, who I don't really, she basically shows her, her arms and on one arm, she's got like this blue cord sticking out of it. And then on the other one, she's got this red cord sticking out of it. And she's essentially like, you need to pull these cords and destroy me so that you can, like live or whatever and she's like no i don't want to hurt you like you're my best friend blah 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 aki like slaps her in the face and is like listen to me this world is fictional and you're the only one who can free everybody otherwise they will always chase us and we will be killed forever so that's why it's called tag because they're always like chasing her kind of like in a game of tag i would have never got that (laughs) <laughs> in a million years i could have watched this movie 300 more times and i would have like never picked that up yeah so essentially after kind of like a back and forth of mitsuko being like no i love you and aki being like you gotta fucking do it mitsuko pulls the cords which are literally like all the way up her body so like her arm skin rips apart and there's like blood everywhere but this whole scene is brutal (laughs) yeah the cords are also like going like from her body into the ground and like into her chest so essentially pulling the cords uh i don't know like literally she splits in half (laughs) yeah rips her in half like lengthwise yeah and it rules this um, is like my favorite I mean, like, the, the bus scene was shocking, but this one, this was, like, my favorite kind of, like, gore scene in the movie. Of yeah. all people getting torn in half, she was the best. Yeah. Especially because she did it different. Like, anyone can be chopped in half hamburger-wise, but not everyone can do it hot, <laughs> hot, hot dog Wait style. Wait a minute. Hamburger? <laughs> I like yeah. that your definition, your, like, explanation for it is by hamburger or hot dog-wise. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Just so everyone's getting a good visual here. Um, yeah, she literally rips in half completely. Um, there's, like, cords inside her. But the scene is really cool because when she rips apart, a doorway appears behind her, and it's just, like, really light. So it, it was, like, kind of jarring. It kind of reminded me of, like, a Hellraiser type thing. Like, you know, how Hellraiser does, like... Yeah, Hellraiser with his lasers. Yeah. It is... The light show, the <laughs> mystic whooshing and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, there's a doorway. And there's just, like, a bunch of cords also that are on the ground. Like, some thick-ass cords. Like, you know, a computer cord. Uh, going from her into the doorway. So, she follows. This was, like, I was watching it on IMD... Uh, IMD fuck. Uh, Prime... And it was, like, free, but with uh, ads or whatever. And right yeah. when she walked through the door, there was, like, an ad. And it, like, startled me. Because I don't remember what the ad was for. <laughs> but it was, like, her, walk- her like, disappearing into light and then hard cut to ad. And I was, like, huh? Yeah, on um, YouTube, it was, like, the ads were cut in every, like, eight minutes. So, like, it would be, like, oh mid-talking God. and it would happen. Yeah. See, at least on Prime, it was, like... There was only four breaks, I think, but they had, like, four commercials in each. The blocking was pretty good, though. Anyways, so she walks through the doorway, and she emerges into a restaurant kitchen. And she's like, okay. She's, like, walking through the kitchen, and there's guys, you know, like, serving up rice, doing this and that. And nobody 
seems to notice that she's there. And so she's like, okay, that's weird. So she exits the restaurant and outside, uh, uh, there are a bunch of dudes being weird. Um, and there's a sign that says male world and also masculine shop. So she's like, emerged into some kind of weird, like pervert man world. There's like a bunch of guys st- like lined up against a wall, st- like on a street. One guy has his both of his hands down his pants. One guy is wearing like a disco ball and like a banana hammock. It's really strange. And in the corner, there's a guy wearing like some leopard underwear and him and this other guy who also has no shirt on are looking at a poster and the poster is for a 3d game called tag and on the poster is a picture of Atsuko as herself as Keiko and as Izumi uh so she's like okay what the fuck I didn't realize this was called tag either so I guess I was just dumb (laughs) <laughs> I just put up a poll on Instagram to see who people's preferred way of being ripped in half hot dog or hamburger, so. <laughs> I can't wait to find <laughs> out. I'm going to vote. What do I think? I feel like hot dog, because they're going to tear your brain in half first. Yeah. The, right? I, I was Not, coming but, at it. But the way she got ripped in half, it was starting from, like, stomach area. Chest. Yeah. Mm. So either way, it seems like it's starting from, like, kind of t- torso. I, I feel like I'm still going to be alive if I get torn in half hammer yeah, for no. longer. Is there a yeah. different ty- is there a different food for like if it's like in Leprechaun Returns where you got split in half like lengthwise but like not through the middle like it was like you know his, you know uh, his face was still intact and stuff. Maybe that's more like a I'm thinking either like a club sandwich, you know, they're <laughs> normally cut in triangles. The, the Reuben style. Yeah. Or it also kind of re- was making me think about, I don't know if people still have these, but I remember it used to be really big to have those like apple things that you would like put down on the apple and it would like not only core the apple, but it would like split the apple into sections. Yeah. I don't know. I remember like... <laughs> it just brought up a very strange memory of when I was like like a little kid like still in California so I was probably like 8 or 9 and the first time I got a, I had this old lady like neighbor who had like a, a basketball hoop in her yard so she would let me play like basketball in her yard and like would like you know give me like treats and shit like fruit and stuff like just like you know friendly neighbors like mhm and, uh, like, the first time, like, I remember her, like, she had that thing that, like, cored the apple, and it was the first time I saw it, it, like, melted my brain. <laughs> I was like, you mean I could eat apples easily? Right? I feel like it, I feel like, like, whenever Pampered Chef was around, like, I know that it's still around, but whenever, like, doing the parties was a big thing, that was, like, a big utensil. And I don't really know that people super use it that much anymore. I mean... Although, you know, they make one for bananas, and I'm like, it is not hard to just slice a banana. Oh, yeah, those, but those things, like, banana. yeah, you have to core the banana. You can't eat the core. What's wrong with you, Katie? I do. <laughs> it's nutrient. It's um, nutrients. Katie just eats the skin. She yeah, eats I the... eat it whole. <laughs> just the I peel. Eat the, I, eat, I eat the uh, the stem thing, too. I love it. Uh, the, uh... That, that crunch sound whenever you bite into it. Those those banana things don't even work. They just kind of mash it. Well, I mean, yeah, and it's like because <laughs> it's like it's not it's not like sharp metal. It's like, it's like plastic, sort of sharp plastic. I've like we had them at uh, Whole Foods when I worked there, and I remember trying one, and it just like it just kind of mush it. Like it'll like cut it a little bit, but it mostly just mushes the banana. Yeah. Um, thinking of like a steak meal prepped with a side of mashed bananas now (laughs) (laughs) Mm. you know like there's this place where i used to live in richmond that did um banana egg rolls and they were amazing uh that's i I would probably try that but yeah i was just thinking of like savory things with bananas i mean now i really want them (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, I'm going to vote hot dogs better. I voted hot dog. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I just, okay. I, like, I just like the idea that people are going to see that today and have no idea what we're talking about for like <laughs> six more days or something. <laughs> well, when this episode comes out, you can, uh, like, not tell yeah. us. I don't tell, the, tell us the answers. Oh, okay. And yeah, probably. What happened? She saw the poster of herself in the game. A guy in a suit steps forward and is like, hey, do you remember me? And if you didn't put it together yet, he is Pigman. <laughs> but he does not have a pig face anymore. He's just a normal guy. God, I missed all of this <laughs> shit. And you still liked it, so that's good. Well, I mean, I just, like, I don't know. Like, when this dude showed up, I was just, I didn't, like... I was just like, oh, well, this is just weird. I just, you know, didn't know what was going on, but I also don't know what's going on in a lot of, like, weird indie dramas I love, so. Yeah. So, yeah, like, he's the only man in this in this sh- movie. So, well, um, no, yeah. Get, well, no, isn't the, the person playing video games at the end? Okay, let's get there. Hold on. <laughs> okay, he's like... Yeah, oh, hey, do you remember me? He, he, uh, I didn't think you'd make it this far. And then he tells her that she's in the future, and then she faints. Which I don't really understand why she, why he was like, you're in the future. Oh, wait, yeah, I do. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the end. This is the Look, end. Look, I don't think any of us We're actually understood there. this ending. No, I do. Here we go. We'll see. She faints. She wakes up, and Tagged she's back. Out. She fainted. <laughs> She got tagged. <gasps> he tagged her. That's why she fainted. Okay. I'm excited now. <laughs> this is what happened. She wakes up. He tagged her. She faints. She's out because she got tagged. She wakes up. She's back at the tunnel. Underground tunnel, cave system, whatever you want to call it. She walks outside, question mark. I don't know. She's like standing still with her eyes closed there's like snow going around behind her she wakes she like opens her eyes she walks into how how to describe this this is basically like a carved out tunnel system it's really big and in the walls there are like these shelves carved out and as she's walking we start seeing that there's like girls like standing on these shelves and i thought it was kind of cool looking because at first when she walks by, you can't see their heads at all. It's just like their bodies. And I was like, what's going on? But as she keeps walking, we see more and more. There's like a ton of them. And it's kind of looks like fighting games or like old school games when you would be on like the character select page where there's just like all of these blank characters that you can play as. So she comes to like the end of the cavern essentially and there are three things there's a bed there is a glass case full of girls and there is a old man playing video games and if you look closely at this old man you can tell he's not really an old man he's just got makeup and prosthetics on what (laughs) (laughs) i mean this is is this that's it's the same guy right yes it's oh yeah it's but okay so i mean like i don't know when you said that i was just like wait was that not a man it is but it's the same guy yeah i just i don't know it just confused me the way it was said everything about this confused me (laughs) yeah so basically she walks up behind him and he's playing video games i'm not really sure how he's playing this sort of game what he's got like a (laughs) one of those old school pads that has like a joystick and buttons like an arcade pad and i'm not really sure how that works but he's doing it He's just, like, barely button mashing. Yeah, he's not great. Obviously, he's not very great. I love movies think video games are played. (laughs) Yeah, there's, so, like, like, one of my pet peeves is anytime anyone in a movie, or, like, just, like, TV, I don't know, anytime anyone plays air guitar very badly, like, they don't (laughs) understand how, like, a guitar works. Yeah. And, like, it's the same when, like, they show people, like, playing video games and, like, the, like, especially somebody that completely just 
doesn't understand how video games work, where like, it's just wildly jiggling. smashing the, yeah. the joystick everywhere, and yeah. that shit drives me crazy. Like, <laughs> give the yeah, I agree. So he's essentially doing that, and on the TV screen we see him playing through different scenarios, and one is the scene of Mitsuko running out of the school while the teachers are shooting at her. One is the scene of the wedding, uh, and one is the scene of the race. And essentially, this is where we find out what happened. So Mitsuko, unfortunately, is already dead. Uh, she died in the spring of the year 2034. He got a sample of her and her friend's DNAs, and he essentially made clones of them. And the girl case... We get a close-up of it. Mitsuko walks over to it. It's, like, herself. It's Aki. It's her friend. It's her other personas also. Just, like, standing there as, like, figures. Like, obviously, they're moving. They're not supposed to be moving. Uh, and then, you know, all of the other girls that are just, like, up on the walls are just, like, other players. Like, the background characters in the game. And he thinks it's funny. He's kind of, like, laughing about it. And he's just like, how did you ever think that your DNA would be used for our entertainment? And so you get kind of like the impression that when she woke up and came out and he said like, haha, you're in the future. It's like, yeah, she is in the future because she died however many years ago to 120 years ago. So at this point in the world, it's like only men. And then like women are just like used as their entertainment essentially. So, so same. I mean, yeah, except for that women, still thankfully exist in real life we're trying we're trying real hard <laughs> so <laughs> oh, we're trying as bleak <laughs> <laughs> uh so essentially yeah he's like here it is baby then so yeah we already established that he is Pigman. young Pigman comes into the room and is like oh the the, the game's character is here. This is great. Takes off his pants. He's also wearing, like, a banana hammock type thing. Not... Don't know what's going was, on. I just thought he was at, like, tidy whities No, those were not tidy whities Those were, like... Those were, they were very tiny. I mean, it definitely wasn't, like, you know... He wasn't wearing, like, a Speedo it or wasn't something. A, well... I don't know. Anyways... I will do a hard analysis of this dude's <laughs> crotch okay. crotch area, like a crotchodile, and figure Nick. it out. Corner. Um. Okay, I'm gonna. Look, oh, this is dodgy. I'm gonna do it. Look up men's underwear type. Type. <laughs> Bikini. Katie's Instagram called... ads are forever ruined. <laughs> it is. It is called a bikini. A mankini, you say? Yeah, uh, it is a mankini. Look, I'm gonna have to see the backside of this this guy's in this movie just uh, to, to figure it out. Well, the backside is like normal. Yes, but I'm saying to figure out if that's what he was wearing or not. I need to see. You just want to see his butt. I need Sion Sono. Is that how you pronounce his name? To uh, send me all yeah. the raw footage. Let's see it. I'll figure I, it out. No, if you Google Mankini, it <laughs> most pulls up Borat's. Uh, oh, swim. the the one over like over his shoulders. <laughs> yes. Ew. Okay, no, that's told, not it though. I told Caitlin the only way I'm going to the beach this summer with her is if I could wear that. <laughs> then there's like a reverse <laughs> one where it's the same thing, but it only has one strap. I'm in. The top, the top question is, is mankini legal? <laughs> the Ow. police force latest secret weapon is the male over, over the shoulder banana holder, the mankini. There's a crackdown. Damn. Oh, wait. The crackdown also included fake penises. Presumably the real thing is still okay. <laughs> and other indecent items of clothing often associated with public displays of mankini wearing. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? 
Oh shit, Mono did the soundtrack for this? Huh. I don't know, I just knew that of the, uh, the other the other band, uh, Glim Spanky. I looked them up. Because their name is Glim Spanky. I hope oh, yeah, shows they... resume eventually, because I want to see Mono again, because they're unbelievably loud. I've never had a chance to see them, but I fucking love Mono. They They're really good. They they seem like because that's like um, it's so weird how many of those bands that make kind of like quieter ish like pretty music on record like are insane insanely loud live like nothing is like that. Nothing is one of the loudest bands I've ever experienced live. Yeah, and, and, yeah, for sure. Um. I was gonna say the only other one would to me for me would be like Def Heaven. Yeah, but Def Heaven's at least like a metal band, so that kind of makes sense. Like nothing's just like a shoegazy band, and they were like, yeah, they were so fucking loud when I saw them. Yeah, well, it doesn't help. Like the couple times that I saw them, it was also in like a really small venue, so it was like getting blasted into space. Well, at least it wouldn't be horror if it was in space. Uh, That's right. I can get away from it. Um, <laughs> like, fuck you, Ellie. Whatever your name is. Who? I oh, said, yeah. the the Twitter person. <laughs> yeah. The tweeter. Anybody Tweet, that tweeter tweets, who fuck must not you. Be named. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you've ever tweeted in your whole life. <laughs> if you've ever tweeted. <laughs> uh, tweeted in your mankini. Let us know. <laughs> If you own a mankini, let us know. Uh, maybe not, though. Yeah, leave uh, us a review and tell us. Just say mankini if you have one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Anyways, he comes in in his mankini and gets down on the bed and is like, come on over here. And, like, Pat's the pillow. The pillow is back. <laughs> Basically, old man Pigman is like, oh, yeah, finally. My 150-year-old dream is going to come true. Surrender to your destiny. So, I also read a synopsis of this that claimed that, obviously, he's saying my 150-year-old dream, well, he's 150 somehow, he has wanted to bang this girl for 150 years, and so now he's finally going to get the chance, and he's like, surrender to your destiny, and I'm like, what? And apparently, he was supposed to have been a classmate of hers that like admired her and I was like what in this movie ever told us that that was a thing did he say it and I missed it I don't know uh wait say that again so essentially the story behind him is that he was an admirer of hers like he was a classmate of Mitsuko's who admired her and then when she died he took her DNA and replicated her and all her friends and have been playing this game with her, but he's, like, in love with her. So his dream was to, like, sleep with her, essentially. And that's why he's like, yay, I finally get my dreams to render to your destiny. And I was like, but that piece about him knowing her in real life, I don't feel like we got from the movie. It was just in a synopsis that I read. Oh, okay. That's I was like, I don't, like, I missed a lot in this ending, and I feel like they didn't say anything. (laughs) Well, that's the only piece that, like, I feel like I don't remember being a part of it. <clears throat> yeah, because so... in my mind, all I just assumed, like, and the way I read it was that he, like, they probably didn't live her during the same time frame, and that he just, like, fell in love with her through the video game or whatever, you know? Right. But, I don't know. Anyways, he's like, surrender to your destiny. So she's like, oh man, and goes over, and they very awkwardly just like lay down on the bed next to each other, but like, just they lay there like mannequins. Then she has a vision of Sir talking about the only way to change your outcome or to change your fate in life is to do something unexpected and spontaneous that you would never do. And in this version, she. This in this version, it is the version where Sir did jump into the lake, uh, and 
So we're back at the pillow fighting scene from the lake where she had like a prick of blood on her finger. And in this version, the feather falls on the blood and turns red. And then Mitsuko decides that she's going to do something. So she gets on top of him, kind of chokes him out a little bit and is like yelling at him about how he is using girls as toys and he shouldn't do that. And he needs to leave them alone. And she starts like, destroying a pillow but the the feathers turn red and there's like feathers everywhere she gets up off the bed takes old man pig man's uh, cane and then stabs herself basically she dies she falls on the ground there's feathers everywhere then we um get the scenes again of mitsuko on the bus and keiko entering her wedding and everything seems like it's normal like Keiko drops the pen she picks it up and stands up and instead of everybody dying she stabs herself with the pen uh Keiko at the wedding walks in and stabs herself with the bottle and basically it's like playing out the scenarios except they are killing themselves before the bad thing could happen and at first I was like what happened with Izumi like why don't we see her but then we do cut to her being already dead so yeah they just show her like lying on the ground with like some blood on her chest with like a no explanation as to what happened right but i'm wondering if it's just because like she the very first one reality is her and she's killing herself and it's just kind of like going down the line so she dies anyway i don't know then we i'm going see... to assume uh chest burster but pro- i mean probably I just... It's in the good. It's in. It was in a good spot for it. So, then we see basically <clears throat> a a field of snow. Mitsuko's laying in the snow, uh, and she says, "It's over now. It's finally over." And she gets up and runs away. The end. Yeah, this is a weird movie. <laughs> so, but- what I was trying to say earlier, which would not have made sense before, is that. My only problem with the movie is that I feel like, and I get it because it was only an hour and 25 minutes, I feel like the pacing could have been different for me because I feel like the very beginning part of Mitsuko looking and being Mitsuko like as herself was really long, and then the part where she's Keiko with the wedding is kind of long, and then the Izumi part is like super short. And they even kind of, like, j- like gypped her Izumi out of, like, a real ending to or story. So I felt like I either needed them to have all the parts be shorter or I just don't know. I just don't like the pacing with them choosing to do three people, if that makes sense. I didn't necessarily have a problem with that. I felt like the movie... Kind of, and like I think a lot of the, like the reviews I read kind of had a same sentiment, or like a lot of the negative reviews were very not into this movie. But a lot of them were like, "This movie starts out interesting and then loses you like after the first fifteen minutes or whatever." And like I kind of get that because like the first, especially like everything up to the teachers like shooting everybody is like wild and then it kind of tapers off a little bit after that in like a less less of like a horror direction up until the the cables in like the the cave or whatever and like i i don't know i i feel like it leaned real heavy in the first like 15 minutes of the movie of being this extremely weird horror movie and then turned into like a weird I don't know, indie drama type thing, but I don't know. I liked it. I liked it a lot. So yeah, I still really like it. I guess if I think about it more, it makes sense because in each of the scenarios, Aki is like getting to her sooner about trying to like break out of the world. But I think the thing that confused me was that like, if he create, I think maybe it comes from my understanding of the technology they're saying is happening. So like, he took their DNA and created a game. Like, he created them in a game, but, like, 
they can be out of the game also. Like Yeah, the thing I was she... gonna ask is why you need a DNA to make a video game, but <laughs> Well, and because he also made replica models of them, so like all the girls that are standing around him, I think he used their DNA to make I I mean I still don't know why you would need DNA. I, I have no idea. Maybe he needed their D I don't know. He like three D printed all the girls essentially. But I'm like when she comes upon him at the end like is that still inside the game is that like the lobby of the game because like she can't actually be in real life but she kind of is that's the part that i don't really understand it doesn't super bother me that i don't understand it i just no i don't i think especially something like this it doesn't need to be this isn't a movie that needs a hundred percent explanation, as you know, like. No, yeah. I don't like. I'm I'm totally fine not understanding it, and I still mean, it's thinking it's I good. Think, yeah, I think it's good enough that like it doesn't totally matter. Unlike some movies that have nothing else that's redeemable, so the fact that they also don't make sense is dumb. I will. I wish Looking I could read the you, novel. Looking at you, Somnium. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but I haven't found a translation of it, uh, so. <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to read one of uh, one of the bad reviews for this movie that says, "Stay, it's a two, it's a two out of ten. Stay away. You will be full of jealousy and malice and hate when you see this. The women are natural and flaunting. They are clean and beautiful. The action is intense and the massacre. Dot dot dot. Yes, there is a massacre. That sounds very threatening. That sounds like a serial killer letter." Uh, I mean, I feel like if you're writing reviews on IMDb, you probably are. <laughs> Everyone else, like, seemed to pretty much like it. All the ones <laughs> on Letterboxd were just like, my girlfriend likes this, I think she's dumb, feminism's uh, bad, it's shit like that. Mm, mm. That tracks. Somebody that gave it a four said, uh, good premise, but I've seen this plot in other movies. Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, oh. I I feel like this seems like something that probably I this this movie felt very Japanese to me, you know, like it it like mm -hmm. it feels like something like that only could come out of like Japanese cinema. So I feel like like the more you probably watch stuff like that, I could see this being sort of similar to other things. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, I have a friend who reviewed it on Letterboxd, oh. and he wrote, Groundhog Day, if it was the gasoline fight from Zoolander. <laughs> what? That checks out. <laughs> Orange mocha frappuccino. Um, let's see. No, I have, there's I have one person I follow that left it a one-star review that said it's like a really bad Black Mirror episode. Unbelievable. <laughs> Fucking blank. Uh, I feel Turn like... Those whole reference points, like fucking Game of Thrones <laughs> and Harry Potter. It's like, this is the only thing I know, so this is what everything is to me. Yeah, like anything yeah, any future dystopian now, it's just like, oh, it's like Black Mirror. And I'm like, no, yeah. it's, it's not. Or anything <laughs> where, like, technology is weird. And I'm like, did you not watch movies before Black Mirror <laughs> happened? <laughs> <laughs> my guess is no yeah I would I, I mean I definitely especially it's free you can watch it for free on YouTube just you should watch it it's pretty good yeah, yeah. the only other movie I'd seen by him was Suicide Club and I don't remember a lot about it it was on kind of like a a background thing but I kind of want to see what some of the rest of his movies are like I might watch that anti-porno movie because it's from what it looks like it looked like uh was pretty like well regarded yeah i really liked suicide club when i was in high school but i haven't watched it since then so i don't really know i mean this movie was really good so maybe it holds up um it's I all like seen... well i was gonna say this movie is also like an hour 24 minutes or whatever which is like a good runtime because i'm seeing a lot of the rest of his movies are 237 minutes yeah, um, I haven't seen anti-porno, but I have seen, like, shots from it, and it looks visually 
like it's pr- probably really amazing just to look at at least so yeah i don't know um all right uh do you have any news yeah um let's see i talked about how they were adapting batman long halloween into an animated uh i guess it's actually going to be two different parts um part one comes out this summer you can watch a trailer now um is this the the one the supernatural dude's doing Oh, I don't remember. I saw, like, a story about one of the animated things coming up that the dude from Supernatural is voicing Batman. Oh, I don't know, because um, the thing that I saw about it, they didn't have the person who was playing um, Batman listed. No, this is... Omri Rose is playing Batman uh, in the okay. long I, don't, I, don't, I saw yeah. like they announced somebody dude, I, I just didn't see what uh, what movie they were specifically going to be in but it's the whoever that main actor was from Supernatural well if you're talking about <clears throat> Jensen Ackles he yeah, does I think the animated voice for Red Hood so I wonder if it's like related to that I mean like, I they they uh, they do like a lot of like having the same people kind of do different voices sometimes so yeah um anyways yeah you can see the trailer is out it's kind of interesting because the first part is rated pg-13 but part two is supposed to be rated r which i feel like oh you know what though under his under his uh, credits, it does say that he's playing Batman, but the actual Batman site listed somebody else. So yeah, uh, we'll I, I don't find know. Out Whatever. When it comes out. <laughs> um, I thought the art style was kind of weird. It like kind of reminded me of like a more detailed Venture Bros. Like the art is style is not what I expected. So I, I feel like a lot of the DC stuff over the last. Um little bit has started leaning uh, a little more like anime looking if that makes sense I think I agree if we're talking about like uh, Young Justice like looks no, more I meant, similar I meant like the animated movies like I feel like they did um, that Batman Ninja movie yeah I and mean, then kind of... of started kind of like like adopting more and more of like a, a modern anime ish style to some of the animation. This is kind of like a step backwards from that. Then it kind oh, of looks that's... more like um, it looks like one of the animated <clears throat> ones that was like more more simple. Uh, maybe it's <clears throat> not the bold and the brave or whatever, but one of those. Anyways, you can decide for yourself. Um, uh, on Letterbox. Uh, Jensen Ackles is credited as Batman in it. Yeah, that's what I said, but then when I looked <clears> it up separate, uh, somebody else came up, so maybe they're separate things. I don't know. Um, He's fine. I like him, though. I'll be good. Um, oh, shit. Solomon Grundy's gonna be in it. I think the trailer only shows like Joker, of course. I like that there's already reviews on Letterboxd. Um, let's see. Uh, I think I'm trying to read my writing. Um, they're going to be doing, well, they're going to be doing a live action version of Shin Kamen Rider, which if you remember from our last week's episode, Kamen Rider was like the inspiration for Zebraman. So I think that's really interesting. And the director is going to be Hideaki Anno, who uh, directed Shin Godzilla. Did they announce it because they heard our episode and they're like, we should bring this back? I think so. <laughs> I think they did. It is it is a it is a coincidence, that's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> and then my last news is that for April, Loot Crate is doing an exclusive collection of uh, Junji Ito shirts. There's gonna be three of them, and uh, they're gonna be you know how normally whenever well obviously because most of his stuff is like manga 
whenever you see artwork of his, like on shirts, it's black and white because it's like manga panels, but they're doing a series where they're taking three of them and turning them into black light color shirts. And they look so cool. Um, there's a Tomie one, of course. There's a really cute one based off of that Cat Diary one. Um, and the cat is like neon pink on it and it's really cute. Um, they're kind of expensive though. I think they're like 25 to $30 for the shirt. Um, but those will be exclusive for this month. Uh, but they are really cool. <clears throat> Did either of you ever own a blacklight poster? Yeah. Kid. No, but I owned a blacklight. I didn't have a blacklight, but I had a blacklight poster. <laughs> yeah. I had, I had a blacklight Metallica poster. <gasps> oh, that's oh, it was real bad. <laughs> I don't remember what the design was. It was like a puss head one, but I never had like an actual black light, so I don't really know why I had it. Yeah, I don't know. I <clears throat> what did I have? Probably like a dragon or some dumb shit. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland, like probably. Oh, they just released <laughs> like a collection of pops that are black light and Alice in Wonderland. They look pretty cool, but uh, all right. Do you guys watch anything good this week? I watched um, Godzilla vs. Kong. I assume Kit did, too. I was going to say, I, I assumed <laughs> everybody would have, but maybe I not. have not yet. Kit, are you still there? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think of Godzilla vs. Kong? It ripped. <laughs> Highly ripped. <clears throat> All the people are stupid, but that's whatever. That's yeah. only Godzilla movie, so Yeah, I don't I don't know why everyone acts like it's a new thing. Like human storylines were really fucking dumb and nonsensical back in like <laughs> the show a series too. I mean, we've had Godzilla movies where <clears throat> people are trying to un like uncover weird gorilla alien plots. You know, with Mecha Godzilla, like the plot being stupid doesn't matter. <laughs> also, like honestly, is anyone like who goes to those movies for the people? Yeah, apparently like, I, a lot of people because that's all I see people complaining about. It's so weird. I don't understand. Like they're totally fine. Like they're mostly unobtrusive. They're kind of funny, at least. Some of them act like they're at least in on how ridiculous some of the shit they're saying is. Um, I did watch it. I will preface by saying I have not seen any Godzilla or King Kong movie except for Godzilla 1998 with my nemesis, Matthew Broderick. <laughs> so, so you've seen the one good one. Yeah, I hadn't watched any of the canon movies leading up so the story didn't like we should have just watched like at least you know skull skull island or whatever leading whatever couple movies leading up to it but i kind of like just wanted to watch it when it came out you know what i mean so i was like let's just watch it uh i was able to like piece together the story because like they did a good enough job telling you the info that like the things that people were complaining about with like, um, what's the girl's name from Stranger Things? Uh, like, Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, people I think had an issue with like her storyline or whatever, and I was like, well, I don't even know what it is, so I don't give a shit. And like any of the parts with the people, I didn't care about at all. I wanted to just see some monsters fighting, and uh, it was pretty. I liked any time there was fighting. I didn't expect to care about King Kong, but I was pretty sad for him, to be honest. But um, this is a Godzilla house, so. I feel like that's the pretty common consensus. I think everybody votes Godzilla in those fights. Well, it's pretty funny because, like, Godzilla is... It was, like, funny when we were watching it because Godzilla and King Kong are literally, like, our two cats' personalities. Like, like... King, I don't know. It's like King Merlin's just trying to chill, and Maytel's always trying to like whip his ass for no reason, and he's confused. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, anyways, um, I also finally watched Tiger King. Blech. Holy Manolis! 
Um, I felt like a crazy person. It's seven episodes, and every single time I thought things couldn't get crazier, they did get crazier, and I just was like, somehow, like, (laughs) didn't see any of the new, like, any of, like, the scandalous stuff about that. Like, literally the only thing that I knew going in is that um, he was in jail and that she probably killed her husband like those were the only things the only information that i knew about this so it was crazy and then it was fitting that they did a like after quote unquote after party interview with uh, joel McHale. like zoom interviewed a bunch of the people from the documentary because we also just finished community so that was like a cool wrap up literally all i've seen from tiger king is that joel McHale thing because when i first moved here caitlin had just finished watching it and i refused to watch it it's so she was I, watching that and i was just like i've seen like half of that part and i was like i don't know what's happening it's really it was a lot because like i think if it was just about the people being crazy because like you can you can you can like sort of guess how just ridiculous the people are by like looking at Joe exotic, which I'm sure you've seen pictures of him. And I think you would like it if it was just the people being crazy to each other, because it's like essentially like, you know, 90 day fiance where people are just terrible to each other. But then you have the aspect of like the animals added. And that was the part of it that was really hard for me. Um, Because the, the tigers and all the animals are just like, can you not put, 300 tigers in the same cage please kind of thing so that aspect of it was really hard but wow it was a doozy i watched i like watched it all in one sitting somehow and so my brain has been kind of messed up since then i watched who uh killed himself like just off camera because he thought the room wasn't loaded loaded Mm -hmm. remains the craziest fucking things i think i've ever seen so i was like Really not, and then the gun goes off, and you just see the dude's reaction. And I was like, "Oh shit, that guy is dead now." Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like so taken aback because I didn't expect to see that at all, and I actually thought that the series kind of framed it as he did it on purpose because leading up to it, they were basically just like he was basically a prisoner. He couldn't do anything for himself. He was like hooked on drugs, etc. But then when Joe McHale like interviewed the guy who saw it he was like yeah i saw it register with him that oh no i made a mistake and i was like that is so sad oh it's terrible it's so bad oh the whole thing just i can't deal with it and i watched one other thing i wanted to talk about but now i can't remember it so well if you remember well oh well and I go. <laughs> yeah you go yeah the Kit, what king? did uh oh, yeah what was... was the other thing you watched <clears throat> tiger king and lion king yeah, yeah, you could DC watch Lion King. You could watch the Full Moon Lion or uh, t- Tiger King movie. Oh God, what is it? <laughs> I don't know. I just know they made one. It probably like a week after. Oh Tiger oh King. oh oh! oh. Like Tiger actually King. based off of Tiger King. They yeah, they made like a like the uh, a movie like they did like Corona Zombies. That's like a something with Tiger King. Woof. Okay. Um, Kit, do you watch anything besides Godzilla? Uh, I watched a lot, but the one thing I really want to talk about is Unhinged, starring Russell Crowe. Oh, no. What if? <laughs> is it actually good? Uh, it's not like good, good, <clears throat> but it's fun in a very campy, absurd way. <clears throat> like I, I recommend for... watching it. I said for. It... Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say it's it's an insane. <clears throat> you know, concept and it gets a little like, you know, okay, well this is over the top even for this movie by the end, but I don't know. It's fun in the same way that like phone booth is where it takes a ridiculous concept and makes it very entertaining. Yeah. Well, his name in the movie is man. And the tagline is he can happen to anyone. (laughs) For some (laughs) reason, all for right. some reason in my mind that movie got lumped in with those like weird like uh, uh like those movies that were coming out for like that like that brief period of time last year where like uh people were outraged about like oh there's this movie about like 
leftist hunting alt right people or some shit, you know? All right. And, like for some reason that movie like in my mind got lumped in with those, so I always just assumed that's what it was. See, this is it's tied to Tenet in my mind because this was the one that came out over the summer where they're like has to be in a theater trying to get people back to theaters and it was like, like the like movie out so <laughs> it was like number one at the box office for like <laughs> the end of summer because it was the only movie that yeah, checks out did uh did you watch bad trip yet yes bad trip rules oh i need to watch that i've never actually watched his show which i I've probably should and the couple episodes i saw were really funny he, have you ever seen the video of him interrupting Alex Jones at, like, some fucking rally where he's, like, giving a speech? <laughs> no. Oh, my God, dude. Just look it up. Like, just, like, Eric Andre, like, and Alex Jones or whatever. It's so fucking funny. He just, like, is in the middle of this, like, crowd of obviously all angry white men that Alex Jones is, like, speaking to and just, like, interrupts the whole thing. It's fucking hilarious. I'm so in. That was like, because for a period I'd seen some things where I was like, oh, this looks like it's going to be real annoying. I don't know if I should like watch his show. And then I saw that and I was like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Trip is really nice too because it's like kind of uplifting because it's obviously like a prank movie and it puts people in these like ridiculous situations that they have to like try and respond to. But like, most of the people, like, kind of unite in response to it. Or, like, I don't, there's just, like, some really heartwarming reactions. And it, like, it made me feel good about people, which is rare. <laughs> so, I said, highly recommend if you need to pick me up. I think I'm going to try to watch that sometime this week. That's, like, my, my next to watch, I think. I cannot wait to hear your reaction to the entire uh country bar scene <laughs> i will report back next week <laughs> <laughs> um yeah the only thing i watched like uh just i've been catching up on 90 day fiance shit but i finished q into the storm which was fucking yeah. incredible yeah i'm about to start it actually i'm not gonna ruin anything uh, the last two episodes are some of the best tv i've watched in a very long time Okay. And like I knew I know I knew everything that happened in episode 5 from listening to the QAnon Anonymous podcast, but seeing it happen, like I had parts where like I it was one of those things where like I caught myself not breathing as shit was happening in it. Oh no. It's it's like it's it's harrowing and it's pretty fucking great. I I can't if you have HBO Max, you should watch the entire series it's pretty great yeah i'm looking forward to it i was waiting for the whole thing to come out and i didn't realize until today that it actually was all out so yeah i i, I think i'm going to try and watch some of the uh director i think his name's cullen hobrook hobrock something like that um he has a couple other documentaries and i thought one of them looked like it was about kind of social media shit being terrible that I might watch and ruin my uh, life. That sounds, yeah, that sounds familiar to me too. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't I can't recommend watching that enough. It's pretty fucking great. And that's all I watched. Um, uh, shout outs Kit, you go first. Uh, my friends in Steel Bearing Hand released an album last week. I guess two weeks ago, whenever this comes out. I don't know. Time is stupid. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Slay in Hell, and it rules. It's like death metal, thrashy punk kind of stuff. So, if that sounds like your jam, go buy it. I always see their name, and I'm always like, that's a pretty fucking interesting band name. Right. Like, I, it, like, it seems like it should be like steel bearing destroyed hand or some shit you know like but now i just think it's a hand made out of steel bearings which <laughs> i'm in escape <laughs> um what about you katie um 
Mine's going to be a podcast that's called Toshiden, and it's T-O-S-H-I-D-E-N, and it is all about Japanese urban legends, and um, it's a bi-weekly, but it's still going. Uh, there's a lot of crazy, cool stuff, um, because it talks about, like, a lot of the sort of urban legends that some of them have been like developed into like American urban legends or whatever, but it goes back to like where they originally came from. Um, and it's pretty interesting. Nice. Uh, mine is the band Sanagi released their first single, uh, with all of the proceeds going to red Canary song on Bandcamp. So go buy that. Uh, next week we are watching Meatball Machine, correct? Yeah. Because Zombie Ass and Robo Geisha do not oh, exist. I would have watched and Robo Dead Geisha Sushi so bad. or whatever. <laughs> um, I like 99% think I've seen Meatball Machine, but I can't remember. So I'm excited to watch it and see if I actually have or not. <laughs> The hell? Oh, yeah. Um, it's been on my list for a while. I don't think that I've seen it, but I like how we all accidentally just picked Japanese movies this month. <laughs> I don't think that was an accident. I thought that was what we were yeah. doing. <laughs> oh, I thought we were just doing like Asian horror and oh, oh yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, yeah. I think that was our idea. That I think we like we all kind of leaned towards that because I feel like if I would have picked like. I don't know. My my other options, like I really wanted to do a Mike movie, but then I was like, well, maybe I'll like do something by like um, shit. I just think the name of the guy did like a pedagore just yeah left well, my brain. But then I was like, all of his movies are supposed to be like actually good, and the Zebra Man movie seems like it's just stupid enough that like it fits. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I just was pointing it out in case anybody was going to come for us. But um yeah. So watch Meatball Machine for next week. It's good to know that this uh won't be horror because it's uh sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to drive me crazy for the rest of the night. Uh, we're now in a week from now, no one's even going to know. We're yeah, well, this about. is a sci-fi podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, if you want to uh, support us, you could join our Patreon at patreon.com slash IPSufferPodcast. Uh, we've recently released our episode on classic movies that we hadn't seen, and then we kind of just put together our next one, which the, the theme was picked of animation. So we each picked extremely Katie's makes sense. I feel like me and Kits are very <laughs> strange picks <laughs> for us. Um, but uh, Kit picked Rango. I picked The Crudes, which makes sense if you know who's in it. And then Katie picked Gotham by Gaslight because we decided we should probably not do like two DC animated movies. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I was surprised at the lack of animated shit or how hard it was to figure out since most streaming apps don't, they have like an anime section, but you can't just look up like animated stuff. Yeah, I was really trying to pick like a, um, like a horror anime, like movie or OVA, but it's just not accessible at all. Uh, Prime does have a few older ones, but they're all like dubbed in English, and I wasn't trying to do that, so I just. I was I was trying to find like a claymation horror thing for a mm -hmm. minute, but like everything's either a short or like just unstreamable. Yeah. So we're gonna watch uh, a DC movie and a movie with Nick Cage playing a caveman. I think I should have picked a B yeah. movie. I fucked up. <laughs> you did fuck up. <laughs> no, I don't even know if that's streaming anywhere. But uh Probably yeah, that'll not. be our May episode. Yep. I don't know what fuck a month this is. I know. It's um 
You can buy shirts and stuff at storefrontier.com slash suffer. Leave us a rating and review and tell us whatever I said earlier in the episode that you should leave reviews for. Mankini. Mankini. Yeah, tell us if you own a mankini. Uh, or, uh, I don't know. I don't... Tell us about crotch, Crotchodile. <laughs> tell us your story, what you think Crotchodile is yeah. in a review. Give us your movie pitch for Crotchodile. <laughs> we got a very little amount of money for Patreon. We can help support your movie pitch. Or... 30, 20, week 30, 20 bucks. Help get it off the ground. Crotchodile or Aloe Crotcher. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Aloe Crotcher. <laughs> <You're> fired. <laughs> uh, follow us on Instagram at I Hope You Suffer Podcast. Follow Kit at Hidden Kitstery. Follow Katie at Werewolf Face. Listen to my other podcast named Kate Movie Club. Um, watch Tag. Tell us. Yeah. Tell us what this movie was about. Yeah, you're it. <laughs> yeah. Tagging you. I hope you're it, but why? Tag. <laughs> I hope the sequel's called Freeze Tag. <laughs> Retag. <laughs> movie tag. I mean, in my mind, the sequel is the Kevin Hart movie. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this would be a perfect double bill in the drive in. <laughs> 